If something can be brute forced in about the same length of time it would take for you to have a coffee break, then you probably need a better way of securing your offline seed backup. In this video, I'll just be running through how to use BTC Recover to uh, brute force descramble BIP39 or Electrum 12 word seeds. Uh, that is seeds that someone might be storing offline and might be scrambling up the word order in an effort to prevent someone who finds that seed back up from being able to use it. But as I'll be demonstrating in this video, it is trivially, trivially easy to do that in an extremely short period of time. And I'll look at just how short uh, later in the video. As much of the security aspect of things is interesting, this video is also for those who might have found themselves in a situation where you have done exactly this, uh, where you have scrambled your 12 word seed, where you've kept that backup offline and you have forgotten how you've scrambled it. So you can use this tool and the steps I'll show you in it to unscramble your seed and regain access to your crypto. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So the first thing you're going to have to do is to download BTC Recover and you're going to have to get that off my repository because uh, you know I've been maintaining it for a few months now and bringing in some new features and upgrades because no one seems to be maintaining any of the original repositories or forks. So you'll need to download that. If you've never used BTC Recover, you'll need to install Python 3 uh, as well as a few requirements and the instructions on how to do that are all on my GitHub now. One of the other things I'm going to be doing from now on is actually including uh, all the information and templates that I use in the YouTube videos uh, in the repository itself uh, in example commands and templates. So what we're going to be doing for this video is actually just working through uh, some of the examples in the descrambling 12 word BIP39 seeds uh, that you can reproduce for yourself. So these examples help you to not only reproduce what I'm doing in the video, uh, but they also will give you a uh, running start if you want to try and then adapt uh, these examples to suit your own situation. In that I've deliberately included uh, a number of different examples for different types of wallets uh, and different cryptocurrencies, whether it's native SegWit, legacy, uh, Ethereum, or even Litecoin as well. And the other bit of information I've included here is something on performance. I spun this up on a 48 core Linode and basically you can expect a Linode to fully descramble an Electrum seed in less than 15 minutes. Likewise, if you're on a 48 core Linode, uh, descrambling a 12 word bit 39 seed will take a maximum of 50 minutes, uh, assuming that the seed that is found is literally the very last one tested. At the end of the day, brute forcing stuff with BTC recover is all about probability. Uh, so for example, if you had a uh, randomly scrambled 12 word seed, you know, there's a 50% chance that it would find it uh, before the 25 minute mark and a 50% chance it would find it after and so on. The way this works in BTC Recover is really uh, quite straightforward. It essentially just makes use of token lists. And what these token lists are is they're essentially a file uh, that has been formatted in a certain way that will help uh, BTC Recover know what all the possible combinations are that you're wanting to use. So all of the uh, syntax in terms of how you lay out a token list file uh, is covered in this documentation in BTC Recover. And uh, yeah, some of these examples that I'll be using actually use different examples of token lists, uh, again, to help you just to get your head around what that looks like. So I'll just run through um, how you'd use the tool for two of these examples. So the first one I'll show you is this one here, and that is for an Electrum SegWit wallet. Uh, and what it is, is a randomized mixed up seed phrase. And it's for this token file here. So what we have is 12 words where we have absolutely no idea uh, what the correct order should be. And I'll just run through the uh, different parts of the arguments that we're gonna use. So we're gonna say no dupe checks, just because that helps save memory. We need to specify the mnemonic length to be 12. Uh, we also need to tell it the language. Uh, I've used DSW to disable security warning. This is an Electrum 2 wallet. And uh, we're just gonna go with an address limit, generation limit of one. Uh, this is an address, which is the first address in that wallet. Uh, and again, if you don't know the address you're looking for, that's fine. You can just use an address database. And I've covered how to do that in another video. And uh, we're going to specify token list. And then we basically just put in the path to where that token list can be found. That's a relative path. Um, and if you just unzipped the stuff as is off GitHub, it'll find it. And uh, because this is an Electrum SegWit wallet, we actually need to specify this derivation path here, which is the derivation path you have to use for Electrum SegWit wallets. So if we just hit go, it's gonna uh, sit there for a while and actually firstly count how many possible passwords there can be and then it's gonna run through them. This is something that'll take a little while. Now it's a great time to go and have a coffee in your Bitcoin mug and if you'd like to support what I do uh, and have a schnazzy mug at the same time, there's an affiliate link in the description. So there you go, on this device it took 11 and a half minutes to run. And uh, yeah, if you'd been running this on a 48 core Linode, uh, it would have knocked this over in about two minutes. 
So I've got examples here that show you how you'd recover uh, an Ethereum address just using the default derivation path for things like Trezor and Mu. Uh, and the other one I'll show you is another example that's probably more realistic. So if say we had a bunch of Litecoins uh, that we had a native SegWit address on a BIP39 wallet, um, we would use a command like this one here. And uh, again, this is pretty much the same commands as before. So no dupe checks is the same, mnemonic length is the same. Uh, language is English again. This time the wallet we are using is a BIP39 wallet. So that's important, that has to be there. Um, we've set the address limit as one because it was the first address in the wallet. Though again, uh, if you weren't sure how early in the wallet an address is from, you might set that to say 10. Uh, this is the address itself, which is a native SegWit Litecoin address. This is the path to the token list. And uh, what we've put in here is the BIP32 path for Litecoin. And then we can just say go. And there you go. And it's found a result, took a grand total of 23 seconds to essentially pull out the correct seed based on this token list here, where we had a pretty good idea about the location of some of the words uh, and knew what some of them started with. So there you go. The only other thing I'll quickly show you is how you can an argument that you can use to sort of speed things up and skip the password counting step. And that can be useful uh, if you're just trying to uh, de-scramble a uh, token list like this one, where it's only 12 words and you have a pretty good idea about the maximum length of time it's gonna take. Uh, which again, on a, this PC right here, it takes six hours to run through the complete address space uh, of de-scrambling a 12-word de seed. And uh, something more high-end like a multi-core Linode or a Threadripper can knock it over in about 50 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste that command here. And uh, again, this one's just looking at an Ethereum address. So I've got the Ethereum address here. Uh, for Ethereum, you do need to specify the wallet type as Ethereum, not just BIP39, just because of the uh, difference in the way that Ethereum derives addresses. And we've got the derivation path. Uh, the big gotcha there is if you have an older... Uh, Ledger or something like Coinomi, uh, they do not use this derivation path. Um, but anyway, that's sort of the default that pretty much everyone else uses and Ledger Live uses now. And we're going to add no ETA. And that's just going to start processing straight away. And uh, it'll actually tell you how many passwords it's doing a second. It's normally much faster, but because I'm recording, uh, it slows it right down. If you're just descrambling a 12 word seed, basically uh, that number is just going to keep increasing until it gets to about half a billion and uh, it will have found the result before it gets there. The other thing this no ETA flag is useful for is benchmarking in that it will just tell you how many thousands of passwords per second uh, are being worked out. If any of you watching have access to CPUs that have dozens and dozens of cores, I would love to know uh, how they go and specifically how long it takes them to solve this one here uh, with the no ETA on. I'm guessing it would take about three minutes. So there you go. As I've mentioned before, descrambling a 12 word seed is quite straightforward simply because there are so few options to search. Uh, you know, descrambling a 15, 18, or 24 word seed, on the other hand, uh, is an entirely different matter. But the thing for longer seeds is if you do know the location of some of the words, say for example, you knew the location of 12 of the 24 words, uh, then again, it makes it just the same as descrambling a 12 word seed where you know the location of none of the words. Uh, so again, having a partial idea about what your seed should be uh, is definitely very important. And uh, it's important to remember that as the number of unknowns increase, uh, the search space increases exponentially. If you're trying to use this tool and run into trouble, your best bet is to uh, leave a reply on YouTube or open an issue on GitHub, uh, and I'll do my best to help you out there. If you're someone who uses this tool to recover a large amount of crypto, uh, I definitely encourage you to consider sending a donation uh, to both support my continued work on this channel as well as the maintenance and continued development of our uh, tools like BTC Recover. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.